Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science. Our top story comes from the field of neuroscience. Collaboration between Boston University and Japanese researchers have tested what they are calling decoded neurofeedback. For these initial experiments, they focused on early visual areas in the brain's visual cortex. What they were testing is whether inducing certain patterns within that part of the brain could improve performance on visual tasks. Essentially, this whole process starts by scanning someone's brain using fMRI while performing a visual task. This gives the researchers a target brain pattern associated with that task. Test subjects are also scanned with the fMRI and given real-time feedback on how similar their own brain pattern is to the target one. Over time, and with multiple DECNEF sessions, the subjects learned to easily induce the target pattern and increased their performance in the visual task without knowing what the pattern was associated with. If anything, this demonstrates the brain's remarkable plasticity, but could be developed into a kind of hypnosis or automated learning. We now turn to the world of evolution where a new discovery may make scientists rethink the evolution of walking. It's conventionally thought that some ancient fish evolved the ability to breathe air and that this lineage eventually became walking tetrapods. This might not be the case as African lungfish, one of the few fish species alive that can breathe air, have been observed pseudo-walking. These lungfish are actually popular pets with scientists, with many rumors of this kind of behavior, but it's only now that it's been confirmed by scientists from the University of Chicago. They appear to hop and bounce across the bottom using mainly their hind limbs for propulsion. Meaning, walking may have developed on the seafloor long before tetrapods had evolved. Our next story is a quick update from the world of chemistry. A team at North Carolina State University has invented a new dye for use in solar cells. Dye-sensitized solar cells are a completely different class of solar technology as opposed to silicone-based solar cells. This kind of cell absorbs incident or ambient light better producing around 20 to 40 percent more energy than silicone in these lower light conditions. And this new dye has a 14 percent greater energy density than those currently on the market. Most interestingly, this dye is effective at such low concentrations that solar cells could even be integrated into windows. Finally, we turn to the world of medicine for more of an opinion segment than news. As you may or may not have heard, a Dutch lab reported that they had mutated a strain of bird flu to be contagious between humans. The unmutated virus has already caused 350 deaths with around a 60% fatality rate in humans. Now, the strain mutated in the lab has been confirmed as having the potential for human-to-human -human transmission and is airborne, but Dutch authorities have said the virus is very secure. Some people may be asking why anyone would create such a deadly virus. Well, understanding how these kinds of mutations affect the virus give us insight in case this kind of thing happens naturally or through someone else. The important thing is that the more sensitive details and the virus itself stay secure, because the knowledge that comes from this could end up being very useful in the future. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description. If you haven't already seen the announcement video from last week, please click the annotation. We're looking to expand the Brainstorm team and need your help.